it's in my little thing. So anyway, I've got one arrow left. Let's go ahead and lob this one down there, and then we'll go pull arrows, come back. I'll talk you through a little stuff with the silverback and all that good stuff. I guess as you guys are watching here, just kind of pay attention to the movement of the rear arm. Just kind of, actually, I like to teach people to pull towards an object behind. So in this case right here, um, when I'm at full draw, I'm actually gonna focus on driving that elbow pretty much right here to this corner of the screen right there. Fuzz high, but nevertheless, good. All right, so what I was trying to say before is a lot of the people um, who I saw this weekend, they had silverbacks. Common question is how heavy or light do I set it? And honestly, um, and I'll get to questions in a little bit. Um, honestly, what you want to do when it comes to tension is I want you to be able to increase pressure and have some pull and increase pressure on the wall until it fires. But I also don't want you to have to get to the point where you're actually starting to completely flex the limbs as you're pulling through too. Um, I've got, I knew that last one was high. I'll give you guys a little gear. Last one was about six inches high. Dang it. But, uh, I want, I want to make sure that you're, you are able to let off the safety without worrying about the bow going off. But I also want you to be able to increase some pressure against that wall before it fires. Now just going back and answering um, some questions that I see commonly about their certain releases impacting different than others. So with releases in general, that's kind of a, a broad statement. Um, depending on which direction your hook opens or how slow the hook opens or how fast, all that can change your lefts and rights. But if you're comparing a silverback to a knock to it, some people can have them shoot perfectly the same all the time. Some people, um, some people can have them hit a little bit different left and right. And really that's gonna boil down to how much string tension you have so you know if you're someone who backs your limb bolts out and your string starts to get kind of loose or you know if you pull your bow back and when it stops if there's sponge there if you have that sponge or if your string is normally fairly loose at full draw then what happens is you can certainly have one release where you're pulling through impact a little different than a release where you're just kind of waiting and waiting and making it happen. So what I find is some people that shoot a trigger release um, when they want to for like a tournament or for a hunting situation, then they actually aren't pulling through that release in the same manner as what you will with this. So you really need to focus on trying to have the best or the same shot with both. And that's really what I think is the best thing about these releases is that they really do teach you the fine details in the things that I call or refer to as preload. Um, I also 
talked with uh, I wish I knew people's could remember people's names but I talked with uh, a husband and wife this weekend that came to uh, archery country in Austin and both of them were shooting silverback she had a mini silverback um, she was doing an awesome job of letting out the safety and really pulling through as was her husband but both of them had their releases um, well his was set a little bit too heavy so he was really pulling I mean I was I struggled to get that to go off um, which is what my good friend Torsten started out with he kind of just set it where he thought he needed to and just pulled like heck which is good because it teaches you the movement but then once you understand how it works and you feel safe with it you really have to find that spot where you're able to do what I call is checking in and so I'll give you a quick look quick at checking in um, this is something that I talked with her about and it's something that all archers really need to focus on um, checking in is what I refer to when you pull your bow back and it comes to the stop checking in is really me feeling how much tension I have against the back wall so sometimes people can pull in and they get really aggressive on that wall they check really hard and what happens is especially if you're shooting like a tension style release you'll let off the safety and it'll fire right away but then the next time they're not checking in as hard so then that that same release actually starts to feel different so I'm just gonna give you a quick look here I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna talk while I let you look at my cams so if I draw back and right now when I come to full draw this is about where I sit you can see I'm I'm on my wall but I'm not overly uh, hard on my wall okay you can see where the where that cable is touching that stop can everyone see that so I'll check in and I kind of come back I'll touch my back wall a little bit like this and that's kind of my starting point you want to make sure that you're on the wall but you also want to make sure that you're not creeping or that there's not pressure on the wall now an extreme uh, example of that is someone that checks in they check in and because they're afraid of the release firing or something they actually pull harder on that wall so I'll give you an example of that so um, if you pull back and you don't check in at full draw and you just pull back and just bend that like that can everyone see that see when I there's a difference when you're looking at this when I'm at full draw, right now I'm at full draw in a very comfortable position, and you guys can see big, my full uh, draw stop. Can everyone see where that draw stop is touching that cable? Okay, so you can see that. I'm checked in, but I'm also right on the wall. Now, if you were someone that didn't understand the wall and you pulled till you were like this, and then let off the safety then you're gonna end up firing one so yeah I look left-handed because I'm actually uh, doing selfie video right now so um, <laughs> I'm sorry Adam Greentree I told you I had to go live I'm on a scheduled dude he's chilling at the cabin he could start a new pot of coffee and he would have been good to go so Anyway, does everyone, everyone give me some thumbs up if you guys, um, if you guys saw that. Do you guys see it? Do you guys understand it? Let me know. See Golden, buying your first bow. Congratulations. That's awesome. Look forward to it. Okay, so I'm going to show you all this one more time. I'm going to show you checking in. So what you need to do is as you draw back regardless of your release you draw back the release stops when the release stops you feel a little tension there come over to your anchor and kind of just check in a little bit so that you know 
you're touching your wall and you're on your wall but you also want to make sure that you're not powering through the majority of that draw cycle so I'm gonna give you one look this is gonna be my actual drawback and how I check in um, I'll give you a look from the side first so if I'm in my shot I will draw back I'm checking here I come over I'm checking in it's not much but there the bows taken off or you can really start to pull hard so now I'm going to show you one more time from the cam point of view so you guys can see um, I'll check in and then I'll over exaggerate and I'm going to show you exactly the difference okay so drawing back checking in or and you all are watching where this peg right here comes around it's gonna come around and it's gonna touch this cable so watch this peg where it comes around touches that cable all right so I'm gonna draw back check in or draw back over exert this right here is going to cause that much tension is going to cause a variation in impact and it's also going to uh, it's also going to cause a variation in it'll change your high and low could definitely change your left and right um, and the reason being is because again string tension and this varies certain model bows have more string tension when the bow is at rest than others as soon as you start to change your poundage you'll drastically change string tension uh, you'll also start to change tension on the cable so if you can imagine um, <laughs> I'm sorry Adam I told you I had to go dude I'm on a schedule here um, so if you're if you back those limbs off a lot of people say um, should I buy a bow and buy it at max poundage is it more accurate it's kind of a loaded question Adam don't break my concentration um, it's a loaded question because technically if you shoot it the exact same it's not more accurate so if you buy a bow and you go out and buy a Hoyt and you want to shoot 65 pounds and you back it down to 65 from 70 it's not going to be more it's not gonna be inaccurate or it's not gonna be more accurate at 70 but it it is just a little bit more forgiving because of the fact the string tension is higher having a solid string tension and solid cables tension I believe if you're shooting a bow properly is gonna make a difference now if you're the type of person that just pulls back and kind of locks in and just sits there and waits and then hits the trigger when you want to it's probably not going to make a difference but if you're going to start shooting the way that um, I'm trying to get people to shoot in the way that I'm coaching then yeah having solid string tension is going to make uh, a big big difference and I think you're gonna certainly prosper from it so um, <laughs> I'll get back and read everybody's posts I've got to do a podcast today so I'll probably go back through well that's a problem with live though I guess I can't read your post so if you have a good question go ahead and put your question for a podcast in the photo that I posted just before this live feed um, if I don't get to it uh, go ahead and do it and the only reason I'm breaking concentration for Adam is because I was jacking with him this morning so eye for eye I believe okay so let's let's rip a few more arrows down here checking in see a check in all right so checked in let off the safety and drew or let off the safety checked in focused on the elbow 
to the object behind me. I'm going to go through some questions here. Um, yeah, RJ, I'll show you my stance in just a second. No problem. Um, so a limb stop, honestly, I don't have a limb stop. I don't put the limb stop in my cam. So if you're asking about that, of course the neighbor's cement truck comes in as I'm doing this. I don't put the limb stop on. It feels really good. But I also like to have just a little bit of forgiveness in my cam. Uh, I learned this years ago. I uh, Once he's down the driveway, then that'll be that. So, and I like shooting live. That way there's no funny stuff too. See? I love right, right behind that elbow. It's just such a sweet place to be. Uh, I feel like if you have the limb stop in there, it's good if you're the type of person that likes to lock in and be stagnant. I could actually, um, and it, on some bows that have a spongy wall, like if it's too spongy, you may need that. It's almost back. This guy. Oh no. <laughs> you guys went down. Now, when I shot Target, for those of you who are watching and remember the original cam and a half system, um, I actually really liked the original cam and a half system because it did have just a little bit of give and that allowed me to kind of check in and feel that, kind of feel where I was at in my valley without the bow taking it away from me. Now on the SVX cam, or the Bobcats going, this is gonna get noisy. Um, with the XVX cam, or the original spiral cam, I actually struggle with shooting much weight with those cams because it's so finicky back there. Um, so if I had my target bow out here, uh, I would show you, I'm only shooting about 55 to 56 pounds on my target bow. And the reason being is because I want to be able to hit that wall and kind of feel where I'm at without it just taking that away from me. Um, you want to make sure that you do have a solid wall, but honestly, when it's so solid, and here's the other thing too some bows some of these bows nowadays are starting to have such high let off that at full draw i mean you you have the ability to put a lot of pressure on the string because so much weight comes off the string um and i'll show you here let me grab my bow so with the compound bow, for those of you watching, just to talk a little bit about string tension, um, with the compound bow, when the bow's at rest, like this, this string has max tension on it, it's solid, right? This is solid, very taut, okay? But the problems come in when Bobcat's going, so we're gonna, I'm gonna have to talk over this guy. The problem comes in when you draw the bow back and these cams roll over, the energy transfers into the cables. Right now the cables are weak, okay? They, there's not as much tension on the cables. When you draw back and you come to full draw, the, ten, the tension transfers into the cables and away from the string. So don't try this at home. So if you come back, you can actually there's not tension on the string so this is why there's so much importance to facial pressure because the string is very very weak right so that's why it's really really critical to make sure that your cam system is forgiving you're shooting a bow that has decent string tension at full draw and also something that you know a lot of people say 
um, they want the speed bow and many times that speed bow comes with a price as well even though it has good string tension in most cases it's actually gonna have a very very unforgiving back wall and you don't want to do that so just to give you a quick look here at stance uh, let me flip this okay so you can see I cut grass yesterday so for stance here's the target here or I guess just for demonstration we'll use this straight line right here okay let's pretend that that straight line is going right to a target so for my stance my stance is going to be just like this it's going to be the ball of the rear foot directly in line with the toe of the front foot both feet are directly under hips so hips directly over the feet ball of the rear foot directly in line with toe of the front foot what that does is it starts to actually change your torso also change your angle of so rj i'll just show you the relevance to stance so with stance what happens is if you're in a position like i am which so my front foot is actually just a few inches behind the rear foot and you can see that when i'm in this position you can see that my that my upper body is slightly open to the target it's not fully open but it's slightly open and this is relevant because when you're aiming at the target so if i'm shooting that elk and i'm aiming at this target if i'm slightly open here then i have much more string clearance here correct go ahead and set this down i'll just show you so if i'm holding this arrow my feet are in the correct position you can see the clearance that i have right here Did everybody see that sorry so if i'm aiming at the target you can see i've got clearance so as soon as i close this front foot and start to bring this front shoulder in then the clearance that i have you can see is way less so by opening this this triangle here opens up as soon as I close it off, the triangle closes. So that's the difference between how much you're gonna hit your arm. Facing you guys, if I'm in my proper stance right here, see right there, you can see it. About there is where I'd be for stance. If I raise this arm up, you can see I have good clearance right here. As soon as I close this stance, you can see the triangle closes now I don't have clearance here and that's certainly going to cause problems likewise if you shoot an open stance so some people almost go toe of the front foot in line with the center of the rear foot so an open stance like this when they come they definitely have a lot of clearance here however you can see that now this rear triangle is starting to change position because my upper torso is laying like this instead of like this okay so as soon as this is here and I'm at full draw now as I pull through the only direction that this triangle can go is this way whereas if we bring the position where I want it now our leverage is back so we can come through this way is that good you guys get it understand it let's see I'm let's see here going through some of your questions what's my opinion on the Hoyt limb stops I I think if you like that super solid wall then it's it's a great system I like it um, I personally just really feel like with this DFX cam because they've put these posts so far away from the axle so the relationship between this axle and how far a draw stop is that's gonna make that cam feel much much more solid so 
in years past where the cams were smaller and that stop was really close and for some people like if you're shooting an A cam or an A position you may feel that it is just a little spongier than what you want because that distance is shorter versus I'm always shooting on one of the last two slots so the wall for me feels perfectly fine but if you feel a little more sponge than what you want then that's the opportunity to put that stop in there let's see <laughs> let's see here um, okay let's reading through reading through um, quality archery shop in Michigan hmm I don't know I don't I don't I don't travel Michigan too much other than if I have to do the deer classic or something but uh, more or less what you're looking for is when you draw back and you check in like I just did check in a little bit you want to make sure you're on the wall but you want you want to make sure you're not blasting through the wall just be at a target and slowly let off that safety and if it doesn't fire then obviously you know it's not too light and then just slowly start to increase pressure and pull until that fires and if it's too much where you feel like you're just giving it everything then obviously it's too much the other thing too is you want to make sure that as you're pulling this front shoulder isn't doing this as you're pulling through because that's going to definitely definitely give you uh, a problem Adam's live stream was better I'm sorry <laughs> um, I'll up my game I got a I got a live feed from a hunting camp um, this is a fuse it's actually a fuse torch um, I really like this old fuse weighted end so that's off my old bow you'll notice people I don't uh, a lot of my stuff I don't change very often uh, let's see here going through uh, JD Jackson you're welcome uh, if I'm helping you improve your shot that's great um, let's see uh, looking through no I answered the stabilizer questions uh, the knock to it and silverback feel very different in the anchor position uh, they really shouldn't uh, the only really the only difference uh, between the two is going to be the only type of difference is really going to be how close your fingers can get together in the center here um, I can shoot both releases uh, without without any problem so really you can see here if those are there there's barely a difference in hook length um, mainly just because actually it's not even cocked so there we go so you can see uh, we line them up thicknesses are almost the same barely 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 different I like that look um, so one might be a little bit narrower but really if you're trying to dig into your anchor position you may feel like there might be a difference but I don't want you to do that I want you to hold your releases down this row of your knuckles here this hand needs to be flat if sometimes you grip in tighter than others and you change your hand that much this much difference is changing draw length overall. You want this hand flat, you want it through that, through this row of knuckles, you want to be in this position, and really regardless, either way, index finger will be under the jawline, middle finger will be right uh, above. And really get in the habit, people, of drawing back till that bow stops, and then bringing your anchor over to your face. When you get in the habit of drawing low like this, one, you load muscles differently in your back, which I don't want, and then you end up coming up and kind of crunching into that shot. I've seen that time and time and time again. So I don't want you to do that. Uh, make sure the neighbors are clear. Construction guy's clear, we'll lob another one. 
Um, so the silverbacks are cut and they're actually, they've already been tumbled. They're sitting in an anodizer and we're at the mercy of an anodizer as always. The green is, takes the most time of any color on earth. That's kind of true. For whatever reason, the green is a slow, uh, for the Noctuits, the Silverbacks is actually the fastest. So I kind of think, if, I haven't checked in with Forrest, but I almost think here in the next week or two, we're probably gonna be having those roll back in, uh, which will be good. Noctuits will follow after that. Um, let's see. What makes your arrow fishtail? Hopefully it's not mine. Mine looks like it's flying pretty good. So if your arrow is fishtailing, there's a couple things. One, if, you're, if your uh, center shot is off, definitely cause fishtailing. Two is facial pressure. Again, I showed you that string and how the string gets light or uh, weak when it's at full draw. So any type of facial pressure you have is going to start to make that same thing happen with the string, which essentially is going to make it happen with the arrow. So uh, you really, really, really need to pay attention to making sure that you've got good clearance with your face and then also good clearance with your cables right through here. So. I normally like to shoot, in this case, um, my center shot's about right there, and normally this arrow is actually pointed like cock vane down. I normally like it a little bit more than that. I like it about right there. Actually, I just noticed that this arrow has got kind of a whacked out fletch. Uh, but normally I turn on these newer bows, if you're shooting a fall away arrow rest, I actually shoot my cock vein out so i shoot this cock vein out gives me perfect clearance through my cables a lot of lot of new model bows that have uh like the roller guards or cable guard systems you can see i'm like my my add that sound is wigging me out but i like to have um my cock vein out on any of the bows that have a flexible cable rod. When this comes in, or if you ever change your uh, cable rod position so that you have tight clearance, like this one here is set correctly, you can see I have good clearance on the inside. If you don't, it'll certainly cause fish tailing. So facial pressure, uh, how you come away from your face. So. If when you shoot, if you're shooting a caliper release, if you want to watch that arrow and you do this and drop your bow to watch that arrow fly, as soon as you do this or pluck at the string, you're sending the string out and away and that's essentially going to cause that arrow to do the same thing until it stabilizes. Um, so that's some of the most common things. Uh, let's see. Let's see, can you go over, okay, go over grip to get the least amount of torque. I'm gonna make, this is my practice round. This is supposed to be my practice session this morning, so I'm gonna make a shot here quick. Then I'll talk to you about hand position and torque. Okay, so let's go get that and I'll talk to you about it as we're going. So with hand position, hand position is going to be critical. Essentially, what I teach is I want people to have um, their hand position or their thumb position at a 45 degree angle. And that's going to make your front knuckles the same. So this position I'm holding right here is almost perfect um, I look down at my bow tell my bow to stop which if you you know most people don't say stop like this if you're standing up and you just tell someone to stop like hey bro stop you'll notice that you're actually at the correct angle most people don't go hey 
stop, like turn your hand up like that. If you turn your hand up like that, you'll feel the pressure underneath your elbow and under your forearm that you don't want. So just look down at your bow, kind of tell it to stop. You're gonna notice that your thumb is on a 45 degree angle, uh, which is important. I always show my shots, people. No funny business. Um, and then what I do is once I tell it to stop, if my face right here is the bottom of my riser, I would slide that up till it hit the bottom of the riser. And then I do what's called leaning on the door, which means I'll lean my bow down so that I have even pressure from the top cradle of my hand all the way down to the pad of the base of my thumb. So the other thing too is um, on your hand, you have a lifeline. So that lifeline is pretty much that, uh, I'll show you. Let me find a pen or a marker here. I'll draw it for you. I'll holster. Um, okay, so on your hand you have what's called a lifeline. When you move your hand when you're a little baby in your womb, create this lifeline right here. Okay, so that lifeline, that lifeline should never cross your grip. So if you can ever see the base of that lifeline, if you can ever see this across your grip, then your thumb's coming up too high or you're choking into your grip too deep or wrapping your hand too deep around your grip. Essentially, you want, again, tell my bow to stop, slide my hand up against the bottom of the bottom of the, right, the shelf, lean down. So I lean down, relax these fingers. My bow grip is sitting right here in this position. You can see I'm not crossing my lifeline. I'm right on the edge of my lifeline. I'll push on it one more time. Okay, I'm pushing. And I'll show you as soon as I let off, you'll see where that bow riser needs. And these hand, these knuckles will be relaxed. Everything's forward. To I always relax the hand completely from the from the bicep forward on the left arm. But when I take it away, you can see where that white stripe is. Again, don't cross your lifeline. Shout out to Handsome Rob on my grips I got made from an elk horn. So that's the importance of grip. We'll go over this a lot more too once website's up. We'll be able to dive into this stuff and all that good goodness. Uh, let's see, anchor point. My middle finger rests right below your cheekbone. Okay, so yeah, this is pretty common. I see this a lot. People pull back and you know, a very, very common thing is people wanting to kind of dig in behind their jaw like this because they just want to feel solid and really you putting your middle finger underneath is the same thing you're trying to dig in feel solid on the neck remember we're not finger shooters we're not shooting recurves we're not shooting fingers underneath like this so we really don't want that and what will happen is when you go to two uh, middle finger under the jaw that arrow is gonna follow uh, your height so at full draw if your middle fingers are under then the arrow shaft is going to come lower on the face and the arrow shaft is also going to start to contact the jaw so let me just give you a quick look here so if I draw back and I put my middle finger under like this see how my arrow is now on my chin I'm gonna have to take my my head really forward to the string in order to touch it or 
and this is what most people do, because that's where they're at, they actually have a longer draw length so that that string can come back and still touch the tip of their nose when their head's in a straight up and down position. You really don't want that. Um, there's a super important reason why my anchor position is taught to be in the position it is. It's a couple things. One, learning to make the bow stop coming over to your anchor point correctly and it brings the triangle of the bow at full draw into a very critical position that allows this arrow to be where it needs to be which is more in line with this what I call the safe zone of your face which is between your lip and your chin you want to be in this cradle right here and uh, pretty much that's gonna work good um, anybody got the time I'm on a schedule this morning people I'm scrolling down um, let's see sorry I was <laughs> now Kim's in everybody's heckling me all right let me read back through I was like 10 miles up on the list here um, <laughs> yeah I can't wait till I get to hunt with Adam um, actually we're gonna do it um, let's see did you have a legitimate question Adam or are you just heckling me I'm trying to look through yeah thanks um, the 41 people that were watching Adam thank you very much I appreciate that um, as much as I love hearing Adam talk I had I had to come on I didn't have a choice so what I'm gonna do is um, as soon as you're done I'm expecting Adam to go live again and if any of you watching mine who haven't seen Adam Greentree um, in the past I'm gonna tell you to click on adam.greentree um, Adam you have to go back live again for your 50th time today and uh, people are gonna listen to you chat now talk something people are here to learn so teach them something cool um, I liked what you talked about for uh, skulls that was good also Adam had a really really important tip um, that I actually have never mentioned and it's super valuable is making sure that like right now if we're at Adams or if Adam was here practicing with me and this I mean my yards lush and nice so this wouldn't be a great example but if Adam just left and threw his fat tire boots in his bag and then went home he would track this luscious beautiful green grass all over his camp and he would cause Australia to not have um, dried out grass with chiggers in there he would now have lush um, lush lawn so he had a great tip of really making sure that when you're at a hunting camp get all the different seeds and noxious weeds uh, off your clothes if you can wash them before you leave that's definitely awesome um, and make sure you spray your boots off and things like that because that is one thing that even as I travel, it's one question you have on your questionnaire. Um, have you be, been in relative distance of livestock or farmyards? And just as serious as the Border Patrol is about mad cow disease or whatever else they're thinking about, um, they're also thinking about those other things. So he had a great tip for making sure you cleaned off your stuff. Um, and yeah, there's finally this thing stops just as I'm uh, just as I'm starting to wrap this podcast or this live feed up so uh, Adam you better go live people make sure uh, make sure T Torsten just now joining in Torsten you're totally late dude did you have like a big meeting with Bruno Mars or something and <laughs> you're just now joining in um so yeah Kimmy you guys should get a I think you guys should get a house here in the states just just for the non hunting season in Australia which obviously is hardly ever um yeah so people recognizing you Torsten everyone loves my uh my crazy German buddy so anyway Torsten I was out shooting silverback today I do have to go 
we're gonna go live a little bit later um, little dud is starting his knock fit series so if any of you are wanting to up your uh, cardio game listen I'm not cam cam is the running machine no question I'm actually trying to just get to the point where I can be where cam was like 20 years ago so if you're like me and you can't um, run a massive mountain every day then Harry has actually got a really cool little routine that his college coach gave him um, that's going to get him in shape to do be doing about 27 miles a week um, which is pretty much what Cam does in a day um, but he's going to be doing 27 miles um, we're going to give you a program and actually this morning Sharon is going to be running with us as well and we're going to give you a program to where if you're not at the level that Harry was you can actually cut that in half um, so it's going to be uh, really really good so check out Adam if he goes live again he normally does about every 15 minutes um, so check him out I've got to I've actually got to go lift because I'm supposed to run with Harry so I want to work out first uh, I got my shooting in I got my coffee in I got my hot tub in now I've got to go do a little lifting and running because we got start work here at nine o'clock. So, uh, just to recap, if you have smaller hands, if you wear a size small, medium, medium to large, something like that, the mini silverback will work. That's what I've been shooting all morning. Um, will work for you. We we just got some more in stock. Uh, otherwise, I'm not sure. I think within a few weeks, the full size ones will come back in. Uh, but other than that, that's that. I got to check out people. Appreciate you and uh, have a very good hump day, please. And thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks, Kim and Adam, for joining in as well. So, bye, Mason. Appreciate all you guys. Website's coming soon. Fingers crossed. We I have four people here working working diligently. Justin has more than that working on it, I'm sure, but. My goal is Saturday release, but I probably shouldn't have said that, but that is, that is my goal. So we'll check with you all later. See ya. Have a great day.